Hello, and welcome to another episode. In this one, we're going to be talking about what a git tag is. This is a question that was asked on stream yesterday. And yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so I guess we'll start with a definition. A git tag is a name that points to a commit. There are two types of tags. Uh, I tend to prefer what are called lightweight tags, and I'll show you the difference between them right now. Um, I'm in a git repository right now. This is just a library that I wrote called AST Pretty. Uh, one line decorate graph. I'm just going to show the history that's going on here. And you'll notice most of the things that are happening here are, you know, just a bunch of commits. This commit is also known as head, which is the master branch, which is also the origin master branch or the origin head pointer. Um, these are not tags. These are branches or, you know, s s uh, sim refs, as they're called. I don't remember what sim stands for, but uh, semantic refs? No, that would be sim refs. I don't know. Uh, but these are not tags, these are branches. And you'll notice if we go further back in the history, we'll eventually get to a tag. Now, what a tag is being used for here is it is marking a particular point in history. Uh, and almost always I'm using tags for releases and not for anything else. So this is this is marking the 2.0.0 release of the ASD pretty tool slash library. Um, and in this case, it's a lightweight tag and I'll show you the difference between lightweight tags in a second. I tend to prefer lightweight tags because they're much easier to create and maintain and they're a little less weird when you're looking at Git history, um, but they have some limitations and I'll talk about those as well. You can create a tag with the git tag command, uh, and by default, it will try and tag the current commit that you have checked out. So I currently have this commit tagged out. So if I do git tag test, um, and then we run the same command again, you'll see that there is now a tag test, which is pointing at this here. You can tag other points in history um, by using the revision. So you can use git tag uh, test two uh, for this. And now if we look at the history again, you'll see that we have created a tag called test two here. Uh, these are both lightweight tags because I just used the git tag command. Uh, if you want to create a heavyweight tag, let's tag this commit here. Uh, again, use the tag name here and the target. Uh, but with a heavyweight tag, there are kind of two, there are, there are multiple ways to trigger this. The most trivial way to trigger this is by giving it some sort of message. This is very similar to git commit dash m, um, but you can give it whatever message you want. Uh, tag test three or whatever. Uh, and this will create a heavyweight tag. And again, this will look similar from get log, like that it won't have anything special here. The only difference with a heavyweight tag is when you show it, you will get both messages here. So you can see there's this extra message component for tag test three, and then the actual commit here as well. And then, you know, it, the commit's contents. Where if I show a lightweight tag, such as test two, you'll see that it's just going to show the commit and there's no additional message up here. Uh, one limitation of lightweight tags that I've meant, or that I've noticed in the past is if you want to do a GPG sign of a, of a tag, so for instance, if we do git tag, uh, get tag, I think it's GPG sign, and then uh, test four, test five. Oh, no, it's not that. It is dash dash sign. Okay. If you dash dash sign, it will actually make us have a message here. You have to have a message when you GPG sign something. And if I, you know, if I were to just, you know, quit this here, you'll see that it will error out if I don't put a tag message here. So release, uh, oops, release test five and it will ask me to unlock my GPG key, which let me grab my password manager and paste in my GPG key. I don't usually GPG sign stuff. This is one of the reasons why I find it really annoying to deal with this. Um, but now if we show test five, you'll see that it has, you know, a PGP signature of that. Um, <laughs> and that's why it requires a message because that's where it puts the signature in here. And this is a, a heavyweight type because of this. Okay, so that's tags, that's lightweight and not lightweight tags. Uh, let's talk about the conventions of tags. So tags are very similar to branches in that they're just, you know, a name that points at a commit. They don't really exist except for, you know, heavyweight tags that have messages. Uh, they don't really exist. They're basically just a pointer to a particular uh, commit in your history. Uh, and branches are very similar. They're also a name that, you know, points at a commit. Uh, but conventionally, tags and branches are very different. The idea behind a tag is it's supposed to be permanent. 
It's supposed to always point to a particular revision and never change over time. Um, you know, if you if you change what a tag points to, that requires a force push because you're kind of rewriting a history there. Whereas a branch is free to you know progress and gain commits and you know move as a history progresses. So by convention, tags are permanent, but you know you can delete them, you can change them, but generally you shouldn't. But anyway, hopefully that explains tags. Uh, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.